Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Axel Grave from 3D Productions, Failing, Comic Convos, and of course, Reactions with an X. I'm here to bring you something brand new, something we've never done before, a best of list. So, without further ado, I'm gonna tell you about five manga that might seem like absolute garbage at first, but are actually hidden gems. Stay tuned and see what's going on. Now before we get too deep into this list, I do want to note that these are not hidden gems for those of us who have read every other manga under the sun, watched all the anime two or three times, and are just ravenously devouring content. These are for your everyday average viewer of maybe some random anime content, someone who has liked Naruto and Dragon Ball Z, or maybe, you know, Sailor Moon, and wants to get into something a little more off the beaten trail, something that they would never pick up regularly. Let's get started. First things first, I want to do an honorable mention as people were going to put a bunch of different ones that I haven't listed or I don't even know about because I don't know every manga. Instead of doing a bunch of honorable mentions, we decided to do a category for this video. This category was named uh, by my friend Lotus from Failink. It's called the Panic at the Disco Complex. In this case, anime or manga has a title that is a little bit long or maybe kind of ridiculous to the point that you maybe don't want to check it out because it seems foolish. A couple examples of this can include that time I was reincarnated as a slime, how not to summon a demon lord, and is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon. For this video, we decided that of these examples, we were going to use the time I got reincarnated as a slime. This was written by Fuse and is illustrated by Mitzvah. We decided to use the time I got reincarnated as a slime because unlike some of the other entries on this list, its art and story are actually very good and worth checking out. Whereas some of these others may lead you to believe they're not worth checking out because of a story that is a bit off or art that is a bit lackluster. The story is about a typical office manager who dies in a stabbing trying to protect his subordinate. After this, his dying thoughts lead him to be reincarnated into a new world with strange and special powers. The only problem is, he's just a slime. Despite being reincarnated as a slime, his amazing abilities allow him to communicate with far superior individuals including the storm dragon Veldora. He gains the name Ramiru and goes on to have amazing adventures. While the series may have an interesting preface and a silly name, it is definitely a hidden gem. Anyway, let's get down to the real suggestions. Now the first entry on our list is going to be One Punch Man. Now I know what you're thinking, Axel, we know about One Punch Man, we really like it, or Axel, we know about One Punch Man, satire is dumb, I get it. However, this is not the One Punch Man you're thinking of, and hear me out. One Punch Man was originally authored and illustrated by a person called One, and it was an amazing webtoon. However, it is not the one you know. The one you know was illustrated by Murata Yusuke. The person who illustrates Ice Shield 21. Sorry, illustrated. It is of a far superior visual quality to the original One Punch Man. The original One Punch Man, authored by One, was a webtoon that did not have the highest quality. It was still very satire and is definitely worth checking out, the story being basically the exact same as it is now. However, the art is a little difficult to stomach compared to the amazing art from Murata Yusuke. We chose One Punch Man at this position because even though it is absolutely one of the most terrible art styles and one of the better stories out of the ones on the list, it's not as much of a hidden gem. You probably know about One Punch Man, even if you don't know about One Punch Man 1. And you might know about One Punch Man 1 as well, since it is where One Punch Man started. One Punch Man, 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 on to the next one. So, in our fourth spot, we have Karakiyoshi Hitman Reborn, and you're gonna have to forgive my pronunciation, I don't speak Japanese, and I'm not good at it, okay? Uh, but in America, this would be known as Reborn. This was written and illustrated by Akira Amano, and it's got an anime, so it's really not much of a hidden gem either. But I would say that it's still not super popular among the casual anime fans. So for people who haven't checked it out, or maybe only checked out a little bit and got lost in the early story, try to tell you why it's worth watching. Now the story centered around Suna, an average seeming everyday boy from Japan, who suddenly gets a new tutor from Italy named Reborn. And the trouble is, Reborn seems like a baby, which is kind of the prefix, or pretext, sorry, of this entry being on this list. You see, with 
the ridiculousness of the situation, obviously we see this in some manga, but maybe not in necessarily the same style as Reborn does it. The other problem with Reborn is that the story does not take off immediately. It does go pretty fast once it gets going, but it takes probably about 50 chapters, which is quite a few episodes, and maybe even more. Now, it's been a while, but I have read the whole manga and watched a good amount of the anime series, and I can tell you it's absolutely one of the better shonen from its time. It's great animation, interesting powers, a diverse plot and cast, and a overarching plot that most wouldn't see coming, especially from such a silly show that starts off in such a ridiculous manner. I can't emphasize enough how Katakiyushi Hitman Reborn can be discarded as trash, but really is something worth watching if you like that kind of thing. Now obviously not everyone's going to agree with my opinion on this, not everyone's going to like this, however I think the number of chapters it made it to speaks for itself. When you get to four or five hundred chapters in a manga, it shows that you have an avid readership and a fan base. Now we're going to start getting into ones that I really think are more hidden gems in the fact that none of these have currently been turned into anime as far as I know. Okay, so my, my bad if they have, let me know and I'll watch them. Number three on the list starting our real hidden gems is Fire Punch. Fire Punch is written and illustrated by Tatsuki Fujimoto, and I've got to tell you, the art isn't necessarily spectacular. It is by no means bad, but it's minimalistic in nature often, reducing backgrounds to zero scape, very little shading, both caused by the world and the design of the author, and of course, limited amounts of characters in each panel, limited amounts of action shots, limited amounts of everything really. It seems very bare bones sometimes. Now, this does develop more as you get farther into the series, and once it really got going with Viz, which is where it's released from, it has a great run. Now, what I will say is this early art style might lead you to believe it's not worth reading, and that is absolutely not true. The story revolves around Agni, a protagonist who has a regenerative ability that allows him to basically kind of be immortal in a way. He lives with his sister in a village and is attacked by another power user named Domo whose flames will never stop, thus leading to a fire punch. Now I could go much deeper than that, but I don't want to spoil anything. Suffice to say it is a very emotionally charged story, with that being said I think fire punch is definitely a hidden gem that deserves to be known by more people and isn't due to the fact that its art isn't more impressive. That is why it takes the number 3 spot on our list. Down to number 2, Special Martial Arts Private Extreme Hell. This is the only manga in the list and it is also a webtoon. It is written and illustrated by Hu Il, aka Old Man Hu, or Ha, H-U-H. I didn't write it, he did, and it's fun. This series goes along the lines of the weird and or long name, however it is also somewhat hampered by a awkward and a little ridiculous story. This is not to say that it is by any means a good or bad series, but rather that you may dismiss it because it's so ridiculous. You shouldn't dismiss this, however, because even though it is ridiculous, it has some interesting ways of dealing with classic shonen tropes and displays characters in a very unique and stylized manner. This is to say nothing of the fact that even though the story is ridiculous, the art, as in most Korean manga, is particularly well illustrated and of course colored. I don't think this would ever get a anime, but I definitely would watch it if it did. Having said that, Lee Su Min is the main character, and once again I'm sorry for my poor poor pronunciation, who goes to the school looking for his father, who ends up being the principal. The school is a martial arts academy focused around teachings with vibration and features a cast of semi rip-off characters. You will see what I mean when you get there, but it is not ripped off from other manga to say the least. This is why Special Martial Arts Extreme Hell Private High School takes the number two spot on our list. Despite it having a very ridiculous story, its interesting jokes and unique and quirky art style make it a hidden gem. We made it! We're down to the number one manga that might seem like garbage at first glance, but is really a hidden gem. Now before I get into this, I want to preface it with two facts. One, this series is probably never going to end, so if you don't want to check it out because you don't like that, I wouldn't blame you at all. Two, it's written based on a reddit form, so it's gonna be a little wild. Now, uh, the title is How I Stalked Some Dude With An Exposed Nipple And Stumbled Upon The Zenithian Sword. I know, I know. I said we weren't going to put the long stupid titles in and we did two of them. But that's not because they had the long stupid titles, okay? It's because of other reasons. The reason this one goes on the title 
is a because it's art much like fire punch is very minimalistic while the lining is good it has very little shading obviously no coloring and the backgrounds are done to a minimum in order to save time and increase production i assume i don't know it is illustrated by Tobita Nikichi and stars Baki, a campfire weeb who slowly evolves his way through what is essentially a game of Dragon Quest, as I understand it. I can't emphasize how much this series looks like it doesn't really go anywhere, but actually has a very interesting plot and story as well as a main character that is not just some random shonen protagonist. The art, while not amazing, does have its moments and can draw you in even with its simplicity and minimalist style. Keeping all these facts in mind, how I stalked some dude with an exposed nipple and stumbled upon the Zenithian sword takes the number one spot for manga that seem like total garbage at first glance, but are really hidden gems. Now, if you don't agree with me, obviously let me know in the comments and we can discuss it. If you do agree with me, I also agree. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, you know, let me know in the comments and we can discuss about other things as well. And if you have any other requests for videos like this, please let me know and I'll see if I can get to them. Having said that, I really do suggest that any and all people check out any of these series, especially the original One Punch Man one. It just gives you a lot of context and perspective regarding the newer series and how something can look bad but be so good, said Morbo. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will try to make more like it, and we will try to improve as always. Later, guys.